Hi everyone, uh, this is a demonstration of an effect that I have found and it's a very uh, simple circuit to do and I'd like to share it and uh, find out uh, your opinion and uh, what you believe is causing this effect. And um, this is the test coil here that I have and it's a coil that I already had uh, on the shelf, off the shelf, and I have a one inch neo magnet in there, and those are probably about one eighth of an inch thick. And I've got it covered here because the magnet just vibrates a bit. And uh, underneath here, I've got another small coil, but that's just a sense coil, and that goes to my uh, probe here for my scope so that I can look at the activity of what's happening inside the coil here. Because if I put my probes uh, on the coil itself, uh, the uh, back uh, collapsing fields are uh, too powerful for the scope, and it and it, I've got problems with it. So that's why I have this little coil underneath here, and I've got a, a battery bank here of uh, let's see here five batteries, all 12 volts in series, and I've got a total of 65 volts that I'll be inputting in this coil here. And uh, the switch is basically a switch that I made myself here. And it's this box here. And what's inside there uh, is a uh, this blade here that I've made. And what's turning it is a small uh, Dremel tool uh, motor. That it's, it's an old motor that I had. And I've got some reed switches here, very, very tiny reed switches. And that's my pos uh, negative uh, uh, read switch here. And the next one here in orange is my positive. And that was an optional one. Uh, so what I'm using is these two here to pulse on and off. And the reason why I'm doing both negative and positive is because I wanted to be able to adjust the uh, duty cycle. So the pulse width, basically. And uh, I've got the m smallest pulse width that I could achieve by expanding the space here. So every time the magnets uh, hit, so a total of four magnets on that rotor there. And my calculations approximately uh, will be about 90 hertz uh, that will be uh, pulsing this coil here with. And the pulse uh, width, like I said, is so tiny that it, what I'm wanting to do is trying to uh, understand better the back uh, collapsing field, the back EMF. And um, what I have found is very interesting, and it's basically the, you know, the thing that we've been doing all along, all, uh, many of us, is collecting the collapsing field by inserting a diode here in the reversed side here so this is my negative but once the field collapses it the collapsing field will go into the positive direction but instead of accumulating this into a capacitor like many of us have been doing i just decided one day or a few days ago to uh, try and see what would happen if you just take that and just send it back into the coil itself what would happen and what I have found that happens is uh, that back EMF even though it doesn't have much energy as far as you know when we're trying to charge a capacitor compared to what we've put in it has an amazing force to interact with the magnet and I'll demonstrate that by this simple little uh, demonstration I put together here for you and uh, we'll have a look at the uh, the scope shot as well there and um, so let me start this up here oh I've got an amp meter attached to it here and let me start this gizmo up so there goes my rotary switch now it's turning and it's uh, getting up to speed and I'll connect my uh, lead here my negative so right now uh, 1.5 uh, milliamps is going into this coil and the coil if you listen to it sorry this camera is really cheap 
the quality might not be too good. I can't get too close. The coil is kind of, can kind of hear activity in it. But what's interesting is as soon as I push the switch on, you'll see that magnet starting to vibrate. So that magnet now, I'll release it. That magnet is not moving to when I press the button, okay? And it's now hovering. Unfortunately, this camera can't get too close, so you can't see it that well. But if you play with this experiment, you'll find this is correct. So it seems that that energy, that collapsing field, has more energy to kick that magnet than the energy itself that's going into the coil. And this is what happens to it. We're at 1.5 milliamp, and here's when I trigger the back EMF to go into the coil once more. The power goes down. So the power consumption goes down and the magnet, the activity of the magnet is much more. And it's not double. It's more like triple, if not more than that. It's kind of difficult to calculate, but I think all you experts out there uh, can maybe uh, test this out and see what you, you find. So it's very simple, very basic, nothing complicated about it. And now I'll give you a view of the scope shot. Okay, so this is the uh, scope shot here with, with it at uh, 20 microseconds. And I'll expand that. And we're now looking at one pulse and I'll even expand that more. So here, uh, that one pulse, uh, this section, I don't know if you can see my mouse here, there's, from this point here, this is the on period, this is the period itself, and I figure it's somewhere around 2%, very, very minimal. And all I wanted to do is just to create a back EMF, which you see here, this is the collapsing feel and going, uh, ending itself here. Now what I'll do is I'll press the uh, switch to trigger the diode to reroute re that back EMF into the coil. And unfortunately I'll have to move my Okay, let's do that again. Let's try that. All right, so now I'll trigger the switch. And there you see, basically the whole back EMF is being absorbed back into the coil. All right. There's that collapsing field. And there's the switch pressed down. So the energy is rerouted back into the coil. And um, the great thing about it is the, um, that energy is, is just tremendously affecting the activity of a magnet. So I have another setup that you can see that that I'll uh, also post, and this was just the uh, preliminary one to uh, show you the effect of the uh, magnet. So that's it for now, and um, oh yeah, the switch. I decided to use that uh, as a test, just instead of using uh, MOSFETs or transistors to see, to make sure this effect is real and it's not something that the transistors are doing. And so far, it uh, seems interesting. So let's uh, talk about it and test it out. Thanks for watching.